Hello, beach friends. I am over the moon excited to share this little bit of time that I have with you to show you how awesome Florida can be. We are going to look for manatees and we're going to be in a boat. So we're going to get to hop around to different locations. We're going to see a stingray from above the water. We're going to see a stingray below the water. We're going to find live shells. We're going to find empty shells. And we're also going to do some beach combing over on Coya Costa. So there will be beach treasures to be found. Now I'm going out today with my new friend, Captain Jenny. We happen to meet at the Florida Master Naturalist class. She's got herself her captain's license and a business taking people out doing these amazing adventures. And I happen to have a YouTube channel where I share awesome things like this. So today we're going to experience what it would be like if you were to charter your own boat for the day. So if you're ready to see what's out there, let's go to the beach. So the adventure that we're going on today, this is something that I typically would probably encourage a family to do. I can imagine going out and doing these things, sharing these experiences with your family or friends or just a group of people and it just being really, really amazing. I'm gonna make my own memories and they're gonna be awesome. And I'm gonna share them with you and it's gonna be incredible how many different things we're gonna to get to do in kind of a short period of time. So already we're looking for manatees. So. Yes, out in the wild, you can go and find manatees. And when you go with an experienced captain, they're gonna know kind of where to look for these animals. And it's just amazing. So this is taken from SeaWorld. This is what manatees look like. We are not gonna see them like this, but I wanted you to see them. They're giant tails because we're gonna see a little bit of it. They breathe, they are mammals. So they'll put their noses up to the surface and that's how they'll breathe. We are not gonna be able to see them like this. I did want you to see them. So that's how beautiful they look at SeaWorld. This is what they look like in the wild. So right there we see two, I think that's a mommy and a baby. So those are manatees just out doing their thing. It's incredible. Now the manatee is the official state marine mammal of Florida and it is native here. They get to about 10 feet in length and maybe up to about 2000 pounds. They are herbivores. So they only eat sea grasses and freshwater plants. Now they do migrate to springs and other warm water in the winter when the water gets a little bit colder and smart critters. I, uh, I myself don't like the cold weather. Now, healthy adult females will give birth every two to five years, and the calves will stay with their mom for anywhere between one to two years. So we got to see a little bit of those critters, and we're off to another spot. We're gonna see if we can maybe see them again. Now, here you go, just look under the arrow. You'll see its little nose, and hold on a sec. See that tail? And it really does look like a mermaid, right? So the Stories go that sailors used to think that manatees were mermaids. Now, since we're talking about manatees, one other thing is they really don't see very well, but they have really sensitive whiskers. So that helps them to detect the plants and stuff that they eat. Because when they're eating on the bottom, it kind of kicks up all the sediment and stuff. So they don't see really well, but they vocalize. It's a high pitched vocalization that they do. They're just really neat critters and that's really exciting to kind of see them again out in their natural environment so next stop is we're gonna go this is in the bay and see where that color gets the water gets a little bit lighter that's where this sand so the difference between the dark water and the light water is seagrass and sand so we're gonna walk around that sandy area and of course i'm, I'm already checking it out i'm already okay is there anything here because you never know and i did oh wait let me just stop that a second all right, we'll just quickly rewind because I did see a shell right there, right there. There's the shell. So I am now it's under the boat at this point. I'm like, okay, I saw it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go find it. So I'm going to wander around, see if there's anything else here. All right, a quahog, big old quahog shell. And as you are standing here, it's so peaceful and relaxing. 
just being out in the water like this. The water's what? I don't know. It's it's above my knees, maybe. Oh, it's just really, really cool experience. So there I am. I'm, I'm hunting again. Just found another quahog. Here we go. But I do know that that critter is alive. I can see its black foot. So I do what any good explorer would do. And I get out my underwater camera to see if it looks any cooler from underneath the water. So that black thing on the bottom, that is the animal. And we see its operculum there. And look at that shell. It is just covered with algae. I can only imagine how old that critter is. Incredible. Really, really amazing to see these big animals. All right, it's not really doing all that much of anything. I was hoping I'd see something a little, a little more exciting, but still kind of cool to see it. Now it looks like Captain Jenny found herself a banded tulip, rather slimy, but we know that those can clean up. Kind of a nice lightning walk and another banded tulip. So Captain Jenny will help you. So if you're looking for those shells, she's gonna be out there helping you find them. Okay, so this I think is the shell that I saw under the boat and oh well I did see a shell and that's all oh, I'm so sorry friend so sorry to dig you up so this is a big old lightning whelk just like that first one we saw that was a lightning whelk as well this isn't quite as big but still a really impressive sized animal really neat to find here's another animal this is a Florida horse conch and that is alive that size is just great. Look again, the camouflage. And I'm kind of touching, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of talking with Jenny. I'm kind of touching the shell because I think there might be like maybe a sponge on there. A little, little ecosystem going on with that critter. Beautiful little horse cock. So we're going to leave that critter there in the water. And just take one more look at this absolutely beautiful location that we got to kind of wander around in. Oh, there's another, probably an anhinga or a cormorant bird. And now we're on going to our next location. We're going to do some beach combing. So we're heading over to Coya Costa. Now, over on Coya Costa, there is a ranger that will reach out to Captain Jenny if there's any birds that are in distressed or in need of help, and Captain Jenny will get them and bring them over to Crow, which is the clinic for the rehabilitation of wildlife. So Jenny also happens to help with the critters that might need a little bit of assistance. So I'm walking up to Coya Costa. It feels like, again, a like super adventure. The tide is high, whatever. It is beautiful. And there's going to be shells. There's always something to find. So kind of got out of the water. So we're going to do a little bit of exploring on land at this point. Been to Coya Costa a couple of times. It is, let me try to remember. Yes, there are a couple of private residences on Coya Costa, but not where we're going to be. Okay, we got ourselves a quahog. The rack line, I, it looks soft. That's a, that is a surf clam. It looks soft, like everything's kind of been here for a minute. It's, a little, it's more rounded. Still really pretty, the lightning whelks. That's a great lightning whelk. Nice size, great color. And those are probably just easier to find. I was thinking about this because of the, the bright colors on the lightning whelks. Some of the other shells don't have that contrast. Look at this view. It was gorgeous. And I'm looking forward to my day. It's still early. We have so much to do. All right, quahog, surf clam, quahog, quahog. Bunch of those quahogs here. Those are, they're, you know what? They're nice shells. I don't collect them all the time. They're a little on the heavy side. Get a piece of a sand dollar. What do we get? Oh, a kitten's paw. Hold on to that kitten's paw. Oh, and a sunray Venus clam shell that is hinged. And these are neat. Now, this one looks smudged. A lot of times those bands on this shell will be very deliberate. This one looks like it, like it's smudged, like the paint was wet. This is really exciting. This is a turtle nest. This is a mommy loggerhead turtle. And these are turtle tracks. And you see them go up. She went up. She dug her hole. She laid her eggs, she covered them back up, made a U-turn, 
and then came back down the beach. Looks like there's a couple of different turtle tracks here, but this does look like it was a successful trip on the beach. Not all of the um, turtles that make it onto the beach don't actually lay eggs. Sometimes they do what's called a false crawl. And that kind of looks like this. You'll kind of see the turtle, you'll see the tracks and then mommy was like, mm, nah, and then she turns around. So there's something either spooks her or she just doesn't feel safe. And so it's called a false crawl. So that's really exciting to see the turtle tracks. It is turtle season and it's also stingray season. And we'll talk about that in a minute. What do I mean by stingray season? So as you can see, it is ridiculously gorgeous here. And sometimes this time of year, you might see a stingray. So they tell you to do the stingray shuffle between May and October because stingrays do tend to kind of like to hang out in the shallow water. Now I saw this little critter and I was kind of following it, but at some point I didn't need to do that. It was turning around again. So we get to get a really good look at this cool critter. Now there's another critter. This is a stingray. There's another critter called a skate and they are different. Skates do not have bar poisonous barbs. This one does. So this is not something that I'm going to, I'm not going to pursue it because it does have a barb and it feels threatened, you know, I wouldn't chase it. So I'm at this point kind of standing still and it's coming toward me and I'm very excited because I get to see it. And then it <laughs> figures out human and then it just took off. But that was really, really cool. But you are gonna to wanna to shuffle your feet. You don't wanna accidentally sneak up on one of those stingrays. Another lightning whelk. You know, those are pretty dependable shells. If I had to say, you can pretty much depend on lightning whelks showing up a lot of the time. Okay, lettered olive. Looks like it's had a run in. It's something that wanted the calcium in its shell. Oh, it's a surf clam and holy cow, it's like the whitest shell I've ever seen. It's so pretty. And then I noticed I'm shelling amongst all these little fish. Well, that's fun. Or fry, is that what they're called? Little baby fish. So that's kind of fun. They've got this little protected area. Okay, on to the shells again. <laughs> Another. So there's a lettered olive and that's kind of cool. Like the outer layer was kind of stripped off and you see all the little letterings of that shell. What do we got? All right, a giant Atlantic cockle or a beach bowl. Do you like myself a good beach bowl? Oh, oh, it's so pretty. It's a little worm snail. Just all the rounded shells, the soft colors. Here we have a calico clam. Again, the coloring is a little bit soft, right? What else we got? A little auger. A lovely auger. Another lettered olive. Oh. Yeah, I'm just checking. When I feel it like that, I'm checking to see those sh those shells can actually feel like glass. Like they're so shiny. So I'd look to try to stick to the shiny ones. That's another calico clam. I do see a spotted slipper snail. Kind of fun. No shortage of shells. And the view is ridiculous. So I got to see that stingray. I'm picking up seashells in this pile. It is beautiful out. Excellent. I will add this serif to my little collection here. A lady in waiting Venus clam. You know, I've been thinking about that shell. I don't think it would be that exciting to me. I like the name. Lady in waiting Venus clam. It's just like this really long name. What else? Oh, broken. Broken. Banded tulip. Funny, right? We'll be in Kais or Marco and picking them up like, like you can't avoid it. And here, yeah, maybe you'll find a piece of one. So there is another serif, another lovely pointed shell, a prickly cockle. Awesome. Oh, and a rough scallop. That's in good shape. Now they do call the rough scallop the rough scallop because it's got a rough surface. You can sometimes kind of see it like it's a little bit beaded, like a little sandpapery. 
All right, so it's in the water. Oh, I'm glad I popped up on here the beach because here we have ourselves a sand dollar. Yeah, ours do have keyholes in it. That's called the five hole keyhole sand dollar. Sand dollars come in different, uh, well, they're always kind of a flat one, but some of them don't have the keyholes in it. Oh, and they also have the arrowhead sand dollar down here. I've only found one of those. And I believe I was here on Koya Costa. Alrighty, another lightning walk, lovely. The dependable lightning whelk. Another surf clam. They're so, I have a thing with white shells too. I like color shells. I love seeing through the surf clams. And I do have a thing for the white shells sometimes. So I think, yep, yeah, just gonna distract myself with some white shells for a hot second. So these are all little surf clams. With the exception of that one that's a little coquina still white though it's still still within the theme of white some surf clams a coquina and some hitchhikers maybe some other little white shells a banded tulip oh it's a little dry not the finest example of a banded tulip i've ever found but still <laughs> considering what we're kind of finding today that's kind of exciting like an old friend right okay here i think this little flash of orange caught my eye a little another rough scallop a lovely lovely little orange rough scallop and, oh sand dollar and a buttercup leucine how buttery are you moderately buttery a moderately buttery <laughs> buttercup leucine couple more turtle tracks again very exciting with the exception that I can't go on the beach at night because you have to use a red light and I, I just can't see. So I don't really do a lot of that night shelling. Here we have a broad ribbed Cardida. High, you know, those are very overlooked in my opinion. I do like those broad ribbed Carditas. And I also like a really great view. Now, I'm assuming you like the same. So at this point, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let you enjoy some beach time. Another piece of a sand dollar. Now at this point it occurred to me, now normally I don't collect broken sand dollars, but these have the doves in them. Silly me. So I'm gonna hold on to this because if you were to open up that sand dollar, you do see the doves in there. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Another lady in waiting Venus clam. This one happens to have a little more color, so it's a little prettier. I love those little bumps on it. It reminds me of an imperial Venus clam, which I have not found yet. But this one again, just got the fancy name. Lady in waiting Venus clam. Sand dollar. Oh, little chipped, but oh, I've learned. I'm gonna hold on to you. I'm gonna hold on to you because you have some doves inside. I cannot stop marveling at how beautiful the water is. My day is amazing. The beach is just giving me treasures. So this is the kind of thing, again, that you could experience with your family. You could come and experience this or, or with your friends or the people that you love. Now, check this out. We had seen this for a while. We weren't sure what this was. I do think this might have been a shark. Jenny thought maybe a tarpon. So hard to say. If I had to guess how long it was, I'm going to say that was maybe three feet long. Yeah, there's Miss Jenny. So not... Not sure what that was. Cool to see, though. It was kind of cool to see. So now we are on to our next stop. We're going to have a little lunch. And we are still going to learn a little bit, even when we stop here. So we're at Cabbage Key. And when you arrive here, you can see this, this tree. Now, Jenny pointed this out to me. This is a cabbage palm. So see the palm 
It's kind of poking out the top there. It's been completely enveloped by the strangler fig. And so the strangler fig is one of those trees that just kind of strangles the life out of other trees. The cabbage palm is still hanging out in there. I just thought that was kind of neat. And they also have really cool, they have gopher tortoises here. Now, the gopher tortoise is the only native Florida tortoise, and it is considered an ecosystem engineer because they can dig burrows that extend 20 to 40 feet. So take a peek at this burrow over here. Yep, that can extend 20 to 40 feet. Now the burrows provide important habitat for other species. So they're considered a, a keystone species. So other things like indigo snakes and diamondback snakes and other reptiles and stuff will also share those little burrows with the gopher tortoise. They're kind of a cool critter. One other kind of cool thing as I was hanging here, so hanging outside today, we decided to dine outside. And when you go with a captain and somebody that knows the area, they kind of give you little tidbits. So Jenny points across and says, hey, yeah, that's Whoopi Island. I said, what? She said, yep, that is Whoopi Island. So here is a look at Google Maps. This is us, we're at Cabbage Key Inn right here. And there's Whoopi Island. Why is it called Whoopi Island? Well, let's just say there was a woman of ill repute who used to offer services over there. And that's why it's called Whoopi Island. I couldn't find any actual information about that. I was digging and I'm just gonna take that at face value because it's kind of a fun story. So in addition to just coming and having a delicious lunch, I might add, I had the tri-tail fish on a bed of lettuce, a little salad, it was delicious. And you learn a little bit more about what's going on in this area. So we had our lunch, I found out about Whoopi Island, and we're ready to go on our next stop. Now there was a little bit of weather and I know my weather, I had my apps, Jenny was also very prepared, so we were not concerned. Now we're going snorkeling. So we found another little area. We can see the sand versus the seagrass and we're gonna get in the water. We're gonna see what all is here. All right, first thing I do notice is color. Like it looks so much murkier. And then that had gotten me to think about the manatees, but we already know that they have really sensitive face whiskers that kind of help them find the seagrasses. So I do see a bunch of fishes. I was looking for seahorses. The seahorses like to hang out in the grasses. So I was actively looking for them as well as shells or just really anything else interesting that I might run into as I'm underwater here checking things out. All right, I do see big old quahog. Big old quahog, we're just gonna, we'll leave that quahog be. Seeing the fish kind of dart in and out of the grass was really, it was so relaxing. All right, more fish. Not so much in the shell department, so I'm not seeing too, too much. But, oh, I'm finally ready to get down. And it's not graceful for me at all. I don't have weights and it's hard to stay like under the water. So I kind of crash land, grab a really beat up lightning whelk, check it out and say, okay, cool, at least it's a shell. And kind of keep swimming around, see what else is here. More fish in the, oh, it feels like a big fish tank. Well, I guess it is kind of a big fish tank, isn't it now? So that's really fun. And the next thing you know, you see a person swimming toward you with treasures. All right, it's a quahog. It's alive. And so again, had it been something else, you know, Jenny would find it. She's going to ID it for you, bring it over to you and help you just experience more of what's going on here. I happen to know that we're looking at a big old quahog. Neato. So we'll just leave that be. Oh, we do. I got myself a buttercup Lucene. <laughs> Woohoo. That's actually a lot more exciting when you have to snorkel for it. So it looks like Jenny got herself banded tulip. We got a horse conch, 
More on that later. We're going to turn that into a little project. We have a decorator worm. So those are worms that just kind of encrust themselves with other broken pieces of shells and whatnot. And then another banded tulip. So Jenny did a lot better than I did in the shell department. And so we decided to check out a different location. So we left that place and we're going to move around. And again, that's kind of the beauty of not being on a tour. Like the captain is there to really entertain you and your family and your friends. So you're going to get to do whatever you like. And I already see there's more stuff here. So we'll sort of crash land and I'm guessing, let's see, I don't know, maybe Pennsylvania leucine, maybe some sort of leucine. Oh, oh, Florida fighting conch, live slippers, all sorts of stuff on that shell. Yep. Yep, that's Florida fighting conch covered in stuff and a moon snail. And I was like, well, all right, I already made the effort to come down here. Might as well check it out. So that is a moon snail. Been hanging out here for a long time. I don't even think a hermit crab would want that shell, but still neat. We got Sunray Venus clam. Excellent. So definitely more goodies here. Fantastic. Oh, what do I see? Sand dollar? Yep. So sand dollar. It's like, has been hanging out here for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, you could. You could try to take that home, soak it in uh, hydrogen peroxide, see if that stuff comes off, but I'm gonna just leave it be. All right, more sand dollars. So definitely more stuff here. I'm glad we moved. Any seahorses? Nope, just another sand dollar. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of keeper material, I think, that one, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll hold on to that one. And oh, a moon snail egg collar. So that's right there. Kind of neat. I normally see this up on the beach. Neat to see one under the water, hanging out next to this sand dollar. Very green sand dollar. A sea star. Look at it moving too. Look at it. It's cruising along. It's little feet underneath it. So that is a little sea star. We'll just pick it up for a second to say hi. Short spine sea star. It's most, one of the most common ones. We have a couple different ones. This is one I usually tend to run into. Oh, you're so cute. So just say hi. Back you go, buddy. Very cute. Moving right along. Oh, what do we have here? The closest thing I could come to to figure out what this is, is there's, these are some sort of sponges. I don't know what kind, oh, glass sponge. I think that's what actually had popped up when I tried to figure it out. Just really cool, never saw anything like it. To me, that looks like a colony of dryer balls with siphons, but I actually think that's a sponge. Kind of cool. Now this was a quite exciting that is a horse conch and i'm going oh, no way i stinking found one so i get it i'm like woohoo it's whole pulling it up and i'm like oh my gosh it's alive so just like that i go from elation to deflation but let's check out this animal this it's gorgeous Look at that shell. The size is amazing. And those animals are orange. Beautiful shell. And the way I'm seeing it is if there's one that's here alive, there could be one that is expired. So I could snorkel and possibly find a horse conch here. If I found a live one, they might expire here. So now I'm really feeling energized. Like, okay, there's good shells here somewhere. But I got sidetracked by this sand dollar. Now this is alive. How did it end up upside down? I do not know, but this is a live sand dollar. It's beautiful. 
And don't go by color alone. Sometimes the dark ones are deceased. You, you just, you're looking for those little hairs and whatnot on them. But that is a living sand dollar. We'll just say hi. We'll put it here. We'll go. Boop. Yep. We'll just leave it right there. And another Sunray Venus clam. Terrific. It, they, it's more special. I, there's a lot more effort going into when you're snorkeling. Oh, another stingray. And they kind of like look like they're um, flying. Aren't they beautiful? This one, you know, he was like, hey, see ya. And it, it wanted nothing to do with me. So it still was just kind of fun. We had seen one earlier and get to see it a different one again. Well, I'm assuming it's a different one. What other kind of underwater treasures? A banded tulip. Well, would you look at that? That's a great looking banded tulip. Oh my gosh, I'm wrinkly. Yeah. So I rediscovered how amazing snorkeling is. It was so fun. It was a beautiful day. And I, I mean, think about it. We went, we saw manatees. We did a little walking around in that water in the bay, which is amazing. We went over to Coya Costa. We went over to Cabbage Key. We just went snorkeling. So again, if, the, if this is something that would entertain you, it sure as heck entertained me. I would go on an adventure like this in a heartbeat. So this is the kind of memories that you can create with people that you love. So if you want to get in touch with Captain Jenny and have an amazing adventure like this, there's all her information. It was a great time. Come down here. It is amazing. I went out and this was at the end of May. 2023 so legitimately this is that is exactly what i saw and i did manage to get a couple things so i snorkeled probably for that slimier uh sand dollar and then i kept some of these other ones that we found over on coya costa i did keep a couple of those surf clams they were so white and so pretty the lightning whelks the uh giant atlantic cockles the prickly cockles the buttercup lucine some of the scallops the broad rib cardita the auger the serif the worm snail the calico scallops the banded tulips the calico clams the I think Pennsylvania Lucene O oh, and the lady in waiting Venus clams. Now I was going to open one of the sand dollars and talk about that and the dubs that are inside, but we're going to do that next week. Patreons, I can't believe that's it. We've already been together for 32 minutes. It went so fast because I just had such an amazing adventure and thank you for allowing me to share it with you. And also big thank you to Jenny. So now that I've got the thank yous out of the way, you guys are awesome. I just so appreciate you and coming along with me on my adventures. Next week, we're going to hit the Sanibel Lighthouse Beach because I couldn't wait anymore and I had to walk over there. So we're going to see that beach next week. Until then, I hope you have yourself a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.